It's a heartbreaking tale. I mean, the, the story of genocide, as we all know in Kurdistan, has repercussions for decades and for generations. Uh, the people of Halabja can tell you 31 years later, they're still suffering from the physical wounds, but also the psychological wounds. And of course, for the Christians, uh, Yazidis, uh, other minorities and others who were victims of ISIS, the psychological wounds and the physical repercussions continue and are very deep and very raw for them. Um, in Nineveh, uh, in Sinjar, Nineveh Plain, all of those areas. Unfortunately, they're not directly under Peshmerga control, nor are they under Iraqi government control. So this makes uh, rebuilding the infrastructure, clearing the IEDs and mines, uh, bringing back electricity, water, schools, health, all of that, bringing all of that back makes it very, very difficult. Um, the other issue, of course, is the psychological trauma. Um, there are many of us who argue that almost everyone in Iraq, including Kurdistan, suffers from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I, I actually think that's true. But for those who were the direct victims of ISIS, this trauma is very raw. It's still every day. It's still at the very forefront of their eyes and their experience. And I think that quite often they react to things understandably because of that experience. We have to be very patient, we have to regain their trust, and we have to rebuild all of the strong ties that we've had in the past. Well, there are different militias that are uh, controlling at least the security of uh, the province of Nineveh and Sinjar, Nineveh Plain and others. Um, it's arguable which of those militias are disciplined and answerable to the commander-in-chief in Iraq and which of them are the opposite. Uh, at the end of the day, this means that for communities that want to return home, the militias do present an obstacle. It's not insurmountable. Um, some of those militias fought valiantly against ISIS those same militias that did that can cooperate with us, with the Iraqi government, with the force, Iraqi government forces, to try and find a solution so that the people of Nineveh, of Sinjar, can return home and that the rest of us can re begin the rebuilding process. There are so many different groups, um, and some of them have local affiliates, um, and it's very complicated. Some of them aren't even from Iraq. Uh, they have embedded themselves in local communities there. It's a very complex situation. I know that there are many people who um, are calling for the KRG and the government of Iraq to just sit down and deal with it. If it were that simple, of course we would have done it. But it's a very, very complex situation with uh, sometimes outside interference, with various competing militias, with, um, as I said, the destruction of the infrastructure and uh, really not nothing um, that can, you can go back to to have a decent life that is secure and dignified. We haven't really reached that stage yet. And certainly, speaking for the KRG, I can say wholeheartedly, we are ready to do whatever is needed, but we need partners to help us. Without partners, we can't do anything by ourselves.